What's going on everybody? Welcome to the King's Monologue. I'm King and I recently completed a reconstruction of King Tut. So I want to share that reconstruction with you. I think it's really accurate and I think it is very honoring of the ancient Egyptians. I think it's very consistent with their style of artwork. I'll leave you to be the judge of that when you actually view it. Before I show you the reconstruction and the process that I took to get there, I did want to kind of give you a bit of background as to how I got there. So in terms of myself, I'm a self-taught historical anthropologist. I've got a postgraduate in education and I obviously have a very non-conformist and non-conventional approach to history. Having learnt that certain topics and certain areas of history have been deliberately suppressed and this isn't just the racial argument there's so many areas of history that just aren't consistent and aren't convenient to the current model that we follow we follow a model of history called the western model and this approach to history wasn't always the approach to history and as a result we've had a lot of history that has been written out of the books civilizations such as great tartaria you probably know that much of the Moorish contribution has been undermined and that's just touching literally the tip of the iceberg. So one of the things that I like to do is really take a look at historical events, see where agenda is at play, see where common sense isn't being applied and when I see that I like to correct it and see what comes out the other end. It sometimes gives you very surprising results, but I think it's very satisfying. And I also think it can be very empowering for certain areas of society to see things that were once hidden from us or at least obfuscated by the proponents of the Western model and Eurocentric historical theory. So what led me to want to reconstruct the face of King Tutankhamun? I think the answer to that is pretty obvious. There has certainly been an agenda in the last, I would say, decade to maybe even two decades. If you go back to 2004 was from the first kind of major reconstruction that was made. And when I say reconstruction, I mean, it was a total redevelopment of Tut's face. A lot of people have this really undying faith in facial forensic reconstruction. They think it's this completely scientific process unfortunately that is not the case whatsoever um, if you just do a little bit of research into um, forensic reconstruction realize that it's wholly a subjective area so what you'll find is people have this kind of whole and undying trust that the information that they're being given regarding these facial reconstructions is scientific and they don't know that these facial reconstructions are largely being conducted by artists under the direction of people who have agendas. I know I've taken a little bit of a, a long route to get to the point of what I was saying but I think the crux of what I'm saying is the reconstructions that are being made I don't think are accurate at all because the thing that they're not taking into account at all is the artwork. The artwork of King Tut is there. And I think the argument you always get against using the artwork in reconstructions is people say things like, well, you know, artwork has been idealized. I'd say you might be able to make that argument, but there's two things. The first thing is if you're going to make that argument, then make that argument across the board because artwork has always been idealized. In fact, the fact that people go on Instagram and they you know, remove blemishes, that is the exactly the same approach they would have taken when they created artwork. They wouldn't be putting every single zit and mole that appears on your face, every single imperfection, but we can still govern that the general face that we're being presented with is what the person looked like. Second of all, let's look at the number of artworks. Many people are unaware, but there are actually over 400 portraits of King Tutankhamun, over 400. And what's striking about them is they're all consistent. We have him throughout his life, literally from his youth, taken right up to adulthood, and the portraits are consistent with one another. They look like the same person throughout. So either King Tutankhamun had a body double because he was too ugly to portray in that regard, or this is actually what he looked like. The broad, consistencies of his phenotype were there and you can't just totally disregard them. King Tut's skull has 
very moderate prognathism that is quite consistent with the region and when I say the region I mean the Nile Valley region the Nilotic area of African you have many Africans who have this level or this degree of prognathism even his protruding teeth that's something that is very common in and around Somalia this is a, a very very common phenotype it's not hard to find skulls that look probably exactly like King Tut skull throughout East Africa but they would prefer to ignore that they'd prefer to lean towards the data that suggests he was more of a Mediterranean phenotype and this is something that's very deliberate I could go on but that gives you a roundabout summary of what motivated my approach to the reconstruction basically my approach to this reconstruction was very simple what i wanted to do was reconstruct his face consistent with the artworks and then see if this fitted onto his skull it's quite simple if i had reconstructed his face and it had not fitted onto his skull then i would essentially have called the experiment a bit of a failure but ironically the reconstructions they've created don't fit and i can prove that and i will kind of show that perhaps in future videos but in this video um i just want to first of all say if we honor the artwork does the artwork honor what we have the remains of what we know to be king tutankhamen and if they do then we can essentially say that the artworks are good so therefore my reconstruction is fine so this is what the reconstruction looks like how i finally created an accurate reconstruction of tutankhamen that actually looks like his portraits modern reconstructions are not built to be accurate they don't even fit over his skull without massive prosthetic distortion. In an effort to hide the clear prognathism that is typical of Africans from the region, they tilt his skull and elongate his nose. You will notice, when overlaid with his mummy, they have completed repositioned his eyes and the length of his nose. Not to mention it looks nothing like his portraits. This would not have been necessary had they just used his actual portraits. All of the 400 busts of Tutankhamen are able to perfectly fit his mummy without and change or distortion to his features required. It leaves you to wonder what the motive could have been in creating this unrealistic deformity and claiming it was a reconstruction. When I created this reconstruction based purely on one of the hundreds of available busts, matching the features and skin tone, not only did it perfectly overlay with his portraits, but it also perfectly matched his skull and mummy without any distortion. Who would have thought you could get a consistent and accurate reconstruction by simply honoring his likeness? I made sure everything was honored in terms of the artwork from the width of the nose, the length of the nose, the width of the lips, the fullness of the lips. I didn't want to exaggerate um, any of that just to be contrary. And I certainly didn't want to purport the ancient Egyptians to look more like a certain group than the other. I wanted to create something that I thought was consistent with the artwork that looked like his statues. But what was actually more striking and more surprising was that when this is overlaid, with his skeleton and with his mummy there is complete consistency without any manipulation without any further morphing um, this reconstruction looks exactly like his mummy and fits consistently you can even see where the nose starts and finishes and the where the mouth overlays with the teeth everything about this reconstruction is consistent and I believe if they took this approach, they could create a much more realistic rendition of what King Tutankhamen looked like. Now, obviously, this is version one. I'm going to be taking feedback from various people in regards to this first reconstruction and see what I can improve in further iterations. But all in all, I'm quite happy with it. This is my first reconstruction. And I think this is a path that I'm actually going to go down with a, a bit more vigor. I think there's certainly something to be said for people creating reconstructions based on the artwork if essentially the people who we classify as the experts simply ignore it for the sake of fulfilling a particular agenda so there you go there's my reconstruction i hope you've enjoyed the video um i am going to do some more follow-up videos after this one please do 
if you've enjoyed it hit the like button um, subscribe if you like the content and if you want to support me do support me on um, patreon basically i really love sharing my research with the general public and i hope you've enjoyed the video i would like to deep dive into some of those subjects that i did touch on earlier um, but i'm going to save that for later videos maybe do some some more specialized videos into those areas um, but yeah thank you for joining the king's monologue and i'll see you in the next one